Hello! In this video, we're going to go through a quick example using our free beam calculator tool that's available for anyone online. We'll be doing things in metric units today, but this works just as well in imperial units. So I went on Google and I found a uh, quick practice problem here. We're going to do problem six, and this comes from the website learnaboutstructures.com. It's an excellent resource to learn about structural analysis, structural design, Highly recommend it for anyone who wants to learn more about the subject or the theory behind it. So anyways, I'm going to jump back into it now. Let's look at the question. For the beam shown below, determine the location and value of the maximum deflection using the moment area theorem. You must find and compare all potential local maxima and minima. So sounds good. We need to find some deflection values. And we've got a diagram here. We've got some information here about our stiffness. So perfect. Let's put all of this into clear calcs. So if I go now into clear calcs, first things first is going to be the length of my beam, followed by my Young's modulus, cross-sectional area, silicon moment of area. So going back here, first thing I can see, 5 meters plus 8 meters, 13 meter of length. No problem. I'll just type 13 meters. My Young's modulus is 200 GPA, so 200,000 MPA, all good here. The cross-sectional area isn't specified anywhere, but because we're only looking at gravity loads on a beam, we don't actually need to worry too much about the cross-sectional area. So we're just gonna leave that as is. And finally, our second moment of area here is 133 times 10 to the six millimeters to the four. So let's type that in, times 10 to the sixth. Perfect. So now we have got our stiffness and our length all set up. Next thing is going to be our supports. So if I scroll down, I can see now I've got a pin support at zero meters and at 13 meters. And I can see the diagram. I've got it at the left and at the right. It's a simply supported beam. So going back here, I've got my pin support at the left end. So zero meters, all good. But the second one is at five meters. So let's move that and it's a roller support. So let's type five meters. And we're going to switch that to a roller support. Now, because we're only looking at gravity loads and the, the, it's, it's only a beam analysis, we don't necessarily need to worry too much about the pinned versus roller uh, supports. However, it's nice to match with the example, so we're going to leave it as roller. Next, we have got our loads. So let's look at the diagram. We've got 96 kilonews per meter between the two supports. So let's start adding that in got distributed load one. Now, right now we've got a, by default, a trapezoidal load, but in this case, it'll be a rectangular load, 96 kilonewtons per meter. I'm just gonna type this, I can type 96, or I can also type WS and it'll just update with this one. So if I change this, it'll also update. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna leave it as is. Um, start location is at zero and we're gonna wanna end this at five meters. We can see now we've got our distributed load between the two supports, just like in the problem. Next, we've also got a point load right at the tip of our cantilever, 150 kilonewtons. So let's go and add that in. So for this, we're going to scroll to our point load. So I'm just going to call this point load, the original, and 150 kilonewtons. And because this is at the end of our cantilever, I can just type L. And you can see it just automatically adds it at the end here. So L because it's the length of our beam. So with that, we've now entered every parameter given in the problem. So let's go back and look at the questions. Find and compare all potential local maxima and minima. So if I look just at the diagram, it's quite obvious my local maximum or my absolute maximum is going to be right at the tip here, 1410 millimeters. And if I look here, I can see 1410 millimeters, negative because it's going downwards. But I can also see that there's a local maximum somewhere around here. So if I come down, I can go to the first span analysis. And now I can see for the first span, the maximum deflection is 44.4 millimeters. And then the other one is 1410. So now let's go look at the solution for the problem. So we were looking at question six, question six. We have got 44.4 millimeters, 44.4 millimeters, and 1410 millimeters at the tip, 1410 millimeters at the tip. So with that, we note that we have 
completed our problem. We know that our deflections match with the problem. If we wanted to, we could also come look at the bending moment diagram, the shear force diagram as well. And I've also got a free body diagram here. So thank you very much. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions at all, you can always reach us by clicking our help button here. You'll see some articles to help you out. And you can also send us an email and we'll be more than happy to reply. Thank you very much.